students. So uh, in this inside, I would like to talk a little bit no more about the empty set, which means I'm talking more about nothing. Uh, I wanted to make some comments about the empty set because the empty set is a set that introductory probability students uh, have uh, some issues with. They, they want to say things about the empty set that they really shouldn't be saying. Now, uh, if you're at all curious, there's a, a set theory is actually one of those uh, areas of mathematics that uh, philosophers are actually rather interested in. And the empty set is one of those um, uh, things in philosophy that they want to talk about because uh, they're, they're a little bothered by um, like some of the ontological issues surrounding a set with nothing in it. Uh, so you can uh, check out this uh, article from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy or the Wikipedia article on the empty set to maybe learn some more about uh, set theory from different standpoints and some of the issues. Like, for example, why we cannot say that uh, sets are collections of objects. It's actually inappropriate to say that. And uh, there are reasons why. And, and the, you can get around it, and it's sufficient for... Uh, often probability theory to just consider sets as being collections of objects. Uh, you'll very rarely run into trouble with it, but if you really wanted to get serious about set theory, you'd have to use what's known as axiomatic set theory, where you have um, a more rigorous notion of sets. Uh, anyway, uh, that stuff aside. So, uh, long story short, you can stop the video right here. A set is a set with nothing in it. End of story. That's it. It's a set with nothing in it and nothing else. All right, but you're watching this video, so let's explain what students have a tendency to want to do with the empty set that I'm going to tell you you shouldn't do. Uh, students want to often ascribe some deeper meaning to the empty set. Let's suppose I were to develop a probability model for coin flips. And in this probability model, I have a sample space and the sample space consists consists of heads and tails. So the two possible outcomes for this experiment are heads and tails. And then I say, okay, so there's thing, this thing called the empty set and it's a set with nothing in it. And it's, and often in probability we're talking about events and we're describing sets as events. So uh, sets as uh, subsets of the sample space or events as subsets of the sample space things that happen from the sample space. And students will start to come up with these narratives for what um, the empty set is. For example, they might say the empty set is when the coin lands on its side. Or maybe I have another probability model, and this probability model is where you flip a coin until you uh, get heads. So you could have heads in this sample space, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, and so on, and you just, uh, you know, going off on, until infinity, just these infinitely long strings of heads and tails. And a student might say, the empty set is the event where you don't stop flipping, so you don't get something in the sample space. Here's the thing, though. Those, in my opinion, those, uh, and I think it's more than just an opinion. I think I'm very much right in this. It's not appropriate to say that the sample space corresponds to those events. What students are trying to say is uh, the, the empty set is, it, it corresponds to an outcome that isn't in our sample space. That's inappropriate because outcomes that are not in the sample space are literally impossible because there is no outcome that corresponds to that. The sample space becomes the universe. So there is literally nothing in the universe that corresponds to that outcome. In order to talk about the coin in this uh, coin flipping example where you flip a coin just once and you track whether it landed heads or tails, if you want to talk about the coin landing on its side, you need a different probability model. You need a different sample space that includes the outcome where the coin lands on its side. And same with this example uh, where you flip a coin until eventually it lands heads up. Students might want to say that uh, the event where you flip the coin forever is going to be uh, corresponding to the empty set. No, that's not true. 
I think what students want to ascribe to the empty set is outcomes that have probability of zero or things that like it's not it's not literally impossible it's just not going to happen that is a different thing set uh, outcomes with probability zero are not necessarily the empty set you can have events with probability zero that are not the empty set so in, in the case of flipping a coin where and you and like in the sample space i described for flipping coin into the lens heads up the coin you will eventually uh stop flipping the coin in that model because there is no outcome that corresponds to the experiment never ending there it's there literally is no outcome that corresponds to that so it is literally impossible right whereas it feels like if you wanted to ascribe this to the real world it's not impossible for the experiment to end it's just not going to happen right in principle you could flip this coin forever and it would and always get tails and never get heads it's not physically forbidden uh where but so but the thing is it's not that outcome is not allowed for in this probability model what you'd have to do is develop a probability model that does allow for that outcome so i like to add the infinity element to that sample space and then show that the probability of getting the infinity element is zero which is a different thing because before if we didn't have that infinity element it will end because it is almost physically impossible for the experiments never end uh, so it does not correspond at all to the empty set because the empty set is literally a set with nothing in it or an event where nothing happens literally nothing happens so um I think it, students just simply find the empty set to be just such a curious thing, such a such a strange idea of a set with nothing in it, literally nothing in it, or an event where literally nothing happens. Um, so uh, I would say that the empty set is more a logical or mathematical necessity than anything that we can actually interpret. Now that said, you can come up with situations where it seems somewhat appropriate to ascribe an interpretation to the empty set for instance if you have some sort of logical contradiction such as a number that is less than two and at least two that is a logical contradiction and the set that corresponds to numbers that are less than two and at least two is the empty set because there are no such numbers so uh or or similarly a four-sided triangle uh, there is no such triangle. It's a logical contradiction. So therefore, the set of four-sided triangles is the empty set. So it does seem somewhat appropriate to say that the empty set consists of... Uh, that, the, that the empty set can be interpreted as a logical contradiction occurred because it does appear. The only thing, though, is similarly, uh, I could say there are sets where there's just no members where there isn't a logical contradiction. For example... Uh, the set of female American billionaire politicians from Rwanda. It isn't a logical contradiction to have a female American billionaire politician from Rwanda uh, in your sample space of, let's say, Americans or people. Uh, it's not a logical contradiction. It just there is no such person. Um, so the, the so so the set of such people is empty. So I would just I would tell you to stay away from interpretations of the empty set that go beyond an event where nothing happens or a set with nothing in it right or at least when we're talking in the terms of events where like using event terminology which is a bit more uh rooted in english like i think it's the re i think the reason why students want to ascribe meaning to the empty set is because often they're seeing in a probability classes where uh, the word set is almost synonymous with event and events are things we try to, to talk about uh, in English. So we try to come up with English words for them. So, and, and there's often meaning associated with events. So students will try to um, come up with a meaning for the event where nothing happens. Well, it's not an event where you get something that's not in the sample space because Things that are not in the sample space and probability theory are literally impossible because there isn't anything in there. 
uh, there was a Star Trek episode um, uh, for Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, what was the name of the doctor? Um, I don't know. She was really cute, though. But uh, there was this one episode where she finds herself on the Starship Enterprise and the universe is literally disappearing around her and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The sample space corresponds to an extremely small universe where the things in the sample space are the universe, right? And anything that's not in the sample space doesn't exist, right? It, this is a model, by the way, guys. It's not, it's not really reality per se. It's a model. So, so we know that things that are not in the sample space do exist, but this is a mathematical model. So that's the way it is. Uh, gosh, what was the name of that doctor? Uh, uh, Beverly, Beverly S. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but that, that's all I wanted to say. Don't say the sample space is something that it isn't. And, uh, you will, and, uh, you'll be right in my eyes. All right. So that's it. And, uh, I'll see you guys later.